Nomad Church. Gear up. For God and Country. Here in the United States, you have rights under the Constitution. What holds them all together? What's the glue that keeps us free? It's the Second Amendment. Your right to keep and bear arms, and that shall not be infringed upon. But it seems like day after day they are chipping away at that. You have Joe Biden, who's anti-gun, but he has armed guards all around him. Same with Kamala Harris. Same with Hillary Clinton. Same with uh, Nancy Pelosi, who lives in a guard-gated community surrounded by a wall. How come it's good for them, but not for us? Because... They don't want us to protect ourselves from them because that Second Amendment was written to keep us from a tyrannical government. That way, if the government gets too far to control, we the people step in and take care of it. We get the government out, put in a new government. That's what the Second Amendment is for. So now Biden and his transition team are already writing legislation. He's already uh, pegged Hillary to be the ambassador of the UN. Um, What's his name? Beto O'Rourke, who's anti-gun. He wants him to be his gun czar to figure out how to take away our freedoms, our Second Amendment. For what? What are they planning to do to us that they don't want us armed with the ability to fight back and to overthrow a tyrannical government? But back to the UN. Don't forget, Obama, right after he left, there was rumors that he was going to run for head of the UN. And remember what I said back about December 2019 to February 2020? The United Nations website, under their jobs, had a posting for disarmament, demobilization, and reintegration officers. The duty station was New York. What are they going to do in New York with that type of job posting for the United Nations? And it's still on their website today. You can just search it. And it says closed. Imagine how many positions they filled. Rumor is it was a million. But what is their intent? I think I'll tell you. In Obama's final address to the UN, his own words were, the U.S. must give up some freedoms. Hold the phone, Jack. Our freedoms were there before you got there. They were written into the Constitution. Who do you think you are? To give up our freedoms to anybody. You don't have that authority. Just like I said you didn't have the authority. To say the United States was no longer a Christian nation. Which it was, is, and always will be. By the grace of God. So who do you think you are. Telling the UN. That the US must give up some freedoms. You're part of that new world order nonsense. I'm not buying it. Got news for you. We don't live in a democracy. A democracy is when six out of ten people agree on something and then force it upon the rest of us. We live in a republic that's governed by the Constitution. The rules are already there. We don't live in a democracy. We live in a republic. When are we going to realize this? Let's take a quick break. But now think about this, with everyone upset about this election and people confused and all kinds of stuff, people stressed out, don't be. Our Constitution is there to protect us. It's we the people. The government's not going to protect us. The government has us so used to being milk fed, meaning if you can't get something done on your own, ooh, the government will help you. But you lose to get that help. Nothing is for free. They're baiting you. Oh, yeah, we'll take care of you. But in the long run, you're going to lose this. You're going to lose this opportunity. It's already being discussed for people that are on assistance and welfare. Remember, they created a system of faults where you've lost businesses because it is COVID crap. People have lost jobs because of it. Now they have to rely on the government for food and medical and health insurance and rent. So the government says, oh, now that we have you all on our system, if you want to keep getting that free stuff, you got to get this vaccine. 
Oh, believe that's coming, folks. So what are you going to do? I've already talked about it in another podcast. Is that vaccine linked to the mark of the beast? So what's the good news? Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 reads, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. That is the good news. No matter who is president, Jesus is king. Don't get discouraged, folks. They can't break our will. Remember how important you are in the kingdom. Each and every one of us is important. You have to keep your energy positive. You want proof of that? If you can, just kind of mellow out, hear my voice, remain calm, and think about something. Donald Trump is our president. You feel how calm you feel right now? Watch this. Joe Biden won the election. Did you feel that little bump? Your temperature went up a little bit. You got a little aggravated. A little bit of adrenaline went through. You just feel icky, right? But let's finish off with Jesus is king and he loves you and he's got you covered. You have nothing to worry about. Feel how good that is? Keep your energy up. Don't worry about this, these turnouts and things. Keep fighting for your freedom. If you're lost, distressed, and just need to reach out to God, I'm going to lead you in a prayer of salvation. Say it, mean it from your heart, because God is listening. We love you, and if you need more information on the ministry, please visit www.nomadchurch.tv. Godspeed. Repeat after me. Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart and forgive me for all my sins. Cover me with your precious blood and write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Fill me with the Holy Spirit and lead me on the road to salvation. I pray this prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.